Canada, we're home to the second highest density of startups in the world outside of Silicon Valley, which I think is quite impressive. And it's very exciting that you can start in Canada and grow in Canada um, and, and stay at home. Yeah, I, I always had this yearning to be working on Canadian brands um, and Canadian businesses. And I, and I think I get personally a lot of pride um, in homegrown talent and, and knowing that there is so much potential um, of you know what Canadian founders and, and small businesses are doing across this country. And so um, for me, uh, it's a joy to be in the job that I'm in now. That's where I get to put all my energy I don't think I'm brave enough yet to be a founder myself, uh, but I feel very honored to work alongside them day in, day out. And and I think it does take a lot of bravery um, to really kind of step off that obvious path uh, and to have the courage to look at a big problem and solve it. And we have two Calgary-based companies in that uh, cohort. So we have I See What You See and we have Virtuo. Uh, and we couldn't be luckier to have Guillermo and Casey and their teams participating. Um, and so that is very exciting. We also, um, in last year's North American Women Founder cohort, had um, Karen Schuett from Livestock Water Recycling. So now in our alumnus pool. Um, and actually, this is very much hot off the presses, but we are thrilled to announce um, our newest program, the Google Cloud Accelerator Canada. It's a first of its kind collaboration between Google's accelerator arms and our, our cloud team to support cloud native uh, startups across the country. And we have Open House AI, who is another Calgary based startup who will be joining that inaugural cohort. So we're thrilled. We're thrilled to have them there. And then one thing I guess I'll add from from my vantage point yeah. um, to double click on the ecosystem itself and why I'm very excited is in 2020, when we launched our first ever cohort to open to Canadian startups, we had no Calgary based uh, companies in that cohort. And we also had very few applications. Uh, and so for me, it's it's really exciting not only to see so many successful applicants join our cohorts, but also this trend of more applicants coming from Western Canada, coming from Alberta, coming from uh, Calgary specifically. And so I think it's a signal um, of all of the progress and advancement that that Calgary has made over the last few years. Very excited. Um, actually, as we speak, we are accepting applications for our Google for Startups Accelerator for Black founders and Google for Startups Accelerator for women founders. Thrilled and honored to be your uh, one year anniversary guest. Um, it's such a pleasure again to see all of the amazing things coming out of the Calgary ecosystem specifically. And so I guess my last ask would be um, to continue to apply to our programs, to other amazing programs across the country um, and really kind of fuel again this wonderful startup ecosystem. Hey everyone, welcome to the Startup Impact. I am Shivi and today we are celebrating our one year anniversary. And I'm really excited because the project that started a year ago with the purpose of fostering the entrepreneurial culture has the first milestone to celebrate. In the past one year, we have brought the business leader, investors, authors, speakers, and to support our vision and mission and to support our cause. Today, we have a very special guest, Ashley Francisco from the Google Startup, who heads the startup developer ecosystem in the country. She manages Google Canada's accelerator program, has scaled startup ecosystems, events, and Canadian partner engagement. Her goal is to bring the best of Google's people, program, products, and technology to startup team across the country. Ashley is a professional marketer and she's originally from Elmira, Ontario, home to the world's largest maple syrup festival and she makes sure she doesn't miss any single event. Currently, she is living in Kitchener, Ontario with her husband and two dogs. And I'm so thankful and I'm really excited to welcome Ashley here. Ashley, thank you so much for jumping us on the call and celebrating our one year anniversary with us. 
Of course, I'm so thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on one year. That's quite an accomplishment. We, we are really honored for your support and really excited to listen to you and to help our community grow. So I would right away jump into this and uh, that reminds me of our first interaction a couple of months ago. You were amazing and so helpful and like really helped us to boost our confidence and to be here. So Ashley, thank you so much again. Of course. And, um, you know, when I, when I was having this conversation with you, the first thing that triggered in my mind was what, what is Ashley up to? Like she is currently supporting the whole global uh, Canadian accelerator program. Um, how did you derive this passion? Like, you know, what brought you here? Because I'm sure this is a really a roller coaster journey, both like mentally and exhaustive, but what drive you to the passion here? Yeah, I think for me, it kind of starts with my upbringing. So you mentioned I'm from, I'm from a very small town uh, just outside of Kitchener Waterloo in Ontario. Um, yeah, my, my town is only really known for, um, the home of the world's largest maple syrup festival, as you said, but otherwise there's probably not a ton of reasons that, that you may have visited. Um, it's a, a small town surrounded by farmland. There's a, a strong Mennonite population there. And so I think unbeknownst to me growing up, living there shaped a lot of my underpinning passions and values that really kind of stand out now. So, you know, the tenants that, um, that hold true in a farming community are things like hard work, uh, building things from scratch, working together as a community. Um, and I think all of that I've gravitated to. And you also find that when you're working with startup teams and startup founders, um, all of those things. And so um, it's a bit full circle. Uh, certainly Google is a very different place <laughs> than the town in which I was raised. But I actually think, um, you know, they both complement each other well from a, from a values and passion standpoint. Um, so, so that was my upbringing. I didn't venture very far to university. I went to Wilfrid Laurier University and then Kitchener Waterloo. I studied business and focused on marketing, like you mentioned. Um, and I spent the first decade of my career in traditional marketing and brand strategy roles. Um, I started, you know, in tier one CPG companies and financial services companies. And while I learned a lot, and I'm very grateful for those experiences. Um, I, I always had this yearning to be working on Canadian brands um, and Canadian businesses. And I, and I think I get personally a lot of pride um, in homegrown talent and, and knowing that there is so much potential um, of, you know, what Canadian founders and, and small businesses are doing across this country. And so um, for me, uh, it's a joy to be in the job that I'm in now. That's where I get to put all my energy I don't think I'm brave enough yet to be a founder myself, uh, but I feel very honored to work alongside them day in, day out. And, and I think it does take a lot of bravery um, to really kind of step off that obvious path uh, and to have the courage to look at a big problem and solve it. Uh, and so, so yeah, so, so I'm very happy to be uh, in the, the work that I'm doing now. Uh, actually, first, uh, I want to say I love maple syrup. Uh, <laughs> I probably, as any other kid, I eat it with everything and I love it. Um, my next goal is to be in the festival too. And <laughs> second, uh, what you're doing is just remarkable. Like supporting that hustler mindset and being in that roller coaster journey and being in that mindset around it and what you said is true like supporting and growing the home talent is amazing so thank you so much for supporting that Ashley and uh, that actually brought me to my uh, next question that I wanted to understand is that while you're working with um, the startups the entrepreneurs there where do you see uh, their passion growing? Like, where do you see the push is? Is there anything that you, that you feel that is missing out there and they need the real support from, from Google uh, Accelerator programs? Yeah, I think, um, well, first and foremost, I think 
we should be proud of the startup ecosystem uh, in our country. I think, you know, we, we're sitting on such rich talent. Um, it's certainly one that I am proud to work alongside. Um, and I think, uh, so a lot of folks, for example, don't realize that um, in Canada, we're home to the second highest density of startups in the world outside of Silicon Valley, which I think is quite impressive. Um, so along that Toronto Waterloo corridor, um, and also, you know, we're a world leader in AI and research. Um, and I think a gap that used to exist, but that I, I think we're seeing a lot of progress and headway is funding. I think you know what what typically or historically was actually quite difficult for Canadian founders was to not necessarily to secure pre-seed or seed rounds, but to secure those later stage funding rounds that are critical to really be able to grow and scale your business. And I think uh, the progress there is phenomenal. Um, every quarter, we seem to outpace ourselves in terms of VC funding and investments in Canadian startups. Uh, last quarter, I believe it was 2.7 billion uh, in, in Q1 of this year, which is phenomenal and, and light years from where, where we were a few years back. Um, so I think the gaps of the past um, probably um, won't you know, won't won't hold us back anymore, which is really fantastic. And, and again, something that we should all collectively be very proud about. Um, for me, the things that stand out um, about our ecosystem are twofold. Um, one, that wealth of technical talent. Uh, more often than not, our founders are technical. Um, and that is such an important skill set to be able to really solve a problem and know you've got the, the technical underpinnings to deliver on it. Uh, and so, you know, with amazing schools like University of Waterloo um, and, and strong places uh, for Canadians to start their careers and learn, paired with the investments that we're seeing now in Canadian founders, there's really no reason that we have to leave. And I think sometimes folks would, would um, you know, migrate to the US or wherever, really just to be able to, to see the scale that they wanted to see in their business. Um, and it's very exciting that you can start in Canada and grow in Canada um, and, and stay at home. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, uh, actually, um, that's the great thing because my heart, my support is to this, uh, to this ecosystem completely. Who, because I know it is, it is difficult. It is challenging to be away from the traditional course, leave their nine to five, be in this uh, road where we don't know like where we are going, where is the dip, how we are moving forward, and it's it's true what people talk about it that there is no overnight success. Is actually twenty five years of a night in making the progress around it. So thank you for supporting that ecosystem and what you talked about uh, the tech entrepreneurs. So do we currently see any kind of a technological advancement? Is there any potential that you see right now that entrepreneurs needs to have or can grow with or, or probably that Google is supporting them with any kind of a technological advancement because I understand there are a lot more tech entrepreneurs right now than ever before and especially Canada being like the next Silicon Valley I don't like saying that but it's like, like Canada. Yeah, we're, we don't need to be the next we're our own version of amazing um but I think ex that's exactly right. I think why our community of founders is so unique and so investable is because of the the technology that that um that they bring to the table. And so um, whether that's, um, you know, pockets of very advanced AI and ML use cases, um, whether that's um, the various hubs of health tech and clean tech startups that we see uh, homegrown in Canada, to me, that's all very exciting because that's the future. That's where we're going. We're going to cleaner technologies. We're going to automation. We are going to advanced healthcare. And I think, um, arguably, we were a bit ahead of our time. Uh, but I think um, the world is ready for a lot of this technology now. And I think we have the exact right ecosystem of founders, uh, VCs, and just the overarching community that's needed to, to make them successful. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And um, 
you did mention about uh, Canada as a whole, which is growing into the tech advancement. And our show currently is Go Local, and we are currently based out in Calgary. So I would be a bit more selfish in asking about Calgary in specific. And I think you have two amazing companies uh, from Calgary in your cohort, uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah. actually. Yes, that's correct. So we um, just recently kicked off our second cohort of the Google for Startups Accelerator Canada. Um, and we have two Calgary based companies in that uh, cohort. So we have I See What You See and we have Virtuo. Uh, and we couldn't be luckier to have Guillermo and Casey and their teams participating. Um, and so that is very exciting. We also, um, in last year's North American Women Founder cohort, had um, Karen Schuett from Livestock Water Recycling, so now in our alumnus pool. Um, and actually, this is very much hot off the presses, but we are thrilled to announce um, our newest program, the Google Cloud Accelerator Canada. It's a first of its kind collaboration between Google's accelerator arms and our, our cloud team to support cloud native uh, startups across the country. And we have Open House AI, who is another Calgary-based startup who will be joining that inaugural cohort. So we're thrilled, we're thrilled to have them there. And then one thing I guess I'll add from, from my vantage point yeah. um, to double click on the ecosystem itself and why I'm very excited is in 2020, when we launched our first ever cohort to open to Canadian startups, we had no Calgary-based uh, companies in that cohort, and we also had very few applications. Uh, and so for me, it's it's really exciting not only to see so many successful applicants join our cohorts, but also this trend of more applicants coming from Western Canada, coming from Alberta, coming from uh, Calgary specifically. And so I think it's a signal um, of all of the progress and advancement that that Calgary has made over the last few years. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud to be here right now, sitting with this amazing tech talent around Calgary and Calgary itself, shifting from the traditional oil and gas to becoming a tech hub now, which is more like an entrepreneurial city at present. So in your, what you said is correct, like initially there were no Canadian, uh, Calgary based company, but now you have seen a lot of growth out here. So with your perspective currently, where do you see uh, Calgary going forward? Uh, where is the future of Calgary or maybe in Alberta in general? And, uh, you know, is there anything that uh, Google startup is coming up with any program specially or anything that's happening around to support this ecosystem around? Yeah, I think, I mean, um, you, you definitely struck that. But for me to see... Um, I think I just read that there are what now 3000 tech companies um, sitting in and around Calgary, which is, you know, a 200% increase over the last decade. That's phenomenal. And it's so great to see that pivot um, from very kind of resource reliant uh, businesses now to also a very thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem. So congratulations. Um, but also, yeah, for me, I think, um, I already alluded to this, but I, I do really see Calgary as becoming a, another startup hub for Canada, um, you know, representing and bringing the best of Western Canada uh, to the forefront, um, which I think is very needed and uh, very exciting. Um, last year, Calgary actually made Startup Genome's top 100 rankings, I think for the first time, which again is very exciting. Um, and the market is really internalizing that the types of companies bubbling to the surface are clean tech, life sciences, um, again, very um, timely. Uh, and so it's great to see that. And then I think the other piece that um, should be acknowledged is how well all three levels of government are, are rallying around and trying to support this booming ecosystem. And that, that always is really great to see as well. Um, so yeah, so I think the progress is irrefutable and very exciting, um, both for Alberta, but also for Canada as a whole. Um, 
for, for me, my programming is designed by nature to be national. And so um, I really do try to support founders from coast to coast and um, not, not strictly those who come from, you know, the Toronto or more obvious um, startup regions. And again, it's a great signal that um, we see more and more Calgary-based companies participating in our programming. Absolutely. And that's great to hear because we would like to be presented more on the national front and would be growing equally with coast to coast that you mentioned around it. And um, actually, you mentioned that uh, Google currently is supporting a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs and more into the tech based entrepreneurship. And there are a lot of different accelerators running across the yeah. country to support the entrepreneurship. So how would you say that Google would, you know, would stand out more and would be able to support and have an edge over those accelerator programs or probably who would be uh, the best uh, companies to participate in the accelerator programs? Yeah, I think b before I directly answer your question to me, um, it was actually critically important as I was designing what Google's accelerator offerings in Canada would look like, um, that anything we brought to this market was additive to all of the great work that already exists. I think for, for me, being a proud Canadian, um, having worked alongside, you know, players like Communitech and the DMZ and Mars and Velocity, um, folks who do amazing work to support Canadian entrepreneurs already. Um, I wanted Google's presence to be supported by and welcomed uh, by all of my peers. Um, and so uh, for us, where we focus at the end of the day is technical enablement. And so um, at where we really want our entrepreneurs to lean on us is to be able to articulate a very meaty technical project, something that will help unlock growth, some a, a problem they've been working through, um, and to be able to um, tell us why Google technical mentorship and advisorship can really help expedite their growth journey. And so um, there are, like we talked about, thousands of phenomenal founders across this country. Um, but that really is kind of the key differentiator at the end of the day in terms of who we may admit into a cohort over somebody else. Um, of course, we have a lot of selection criteria. We're looking for slightly later stage companies than some of the other incubators and accelerators. So often seed to series A funding is where we tend to add the most value. But we really want to see um, synergy between the technology that that company is building on um, and, and Google being able to, to really add value in that space. Yeah, and I remember we having this discussion of supporting diversity and inclusion in the accelerator program. So is there anything coming up on that space where we can have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, people from different uh, backgrounds uh, helping, uh, getting help from the Google accelerators? Absolutely. So very excited. Um, actually, as we speak, we are accepting applications for our Google for Startups Accelerator for Black founders and Google for Startups Accelerator for women founders. So um, it's, it's um, you know, certainly a sense of pride for me that Google is committed to supporting not just amazing founders across this country, but also typically underrepresented groups who um, are less likely to have access to mentorship and to funding. Um, and so we've designed these two programs to really counterbalance um, those realities. Um, and I think, you know, it's in all of our best interest to really have a strong founder pool across Canada that reflects the amazing diversity that just naturally exists in this country. Uh, uh, and so we're very thrilled to be accepting applications for both of those as we speak. Happy to share the, the application websites as well. Um, they are both North American in scope. Uh, and so we'll be admitting both US-based and Canadian-based uh, startup teams into those programs. Great news, great announcements. And I would encourage uh, my audience who are listening here to please take the advantage and enroll in the program. Uh, so thank you, Ashley, for uh, making those announcements. Really, really appreciate the support. And um, I was just curious to know that, okay, so 
companies go through these accelerator programs, they undergo the, the cohort and they come out as a graduate. So what happens after that? Is there any support that Google provides once uh, we are out of the program, any kind of an alumni support that happens around the programs too? Yes, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, they always have access to me thereafter. Um, I, I love hearing from our alumni um, updates, um, new kind of mentor asks or, or requests that they may have. And so they are, we always say they are always a member of the Google Accelerator family thereafter. Um, but we do also have a formal alumni engagement community. And so we'll host quarterly events, um, things that we think are topical for, for our alumni founders. Uh, and also, I think equally as important is building that community. And I think, uh, you know, anyone who is a founder who works with founders uh, can appreciate how important that community is. Um, there is no lonelier job at times than being a founder. Um, and, and we found such a um, side peripheral benefit of running these programs is the linkages between the founders themselves and how much they can help one another. Um, you know, many of them are going through an experience that somebody went through a few months back. And so we do see a lot of that best practice sharing. Um, and that is such a great uh, outcome of being a part of a program like this also. And so um, certainly Google adds to the alumni community, but also the founders add to it themselves as well. Right. And um, uh, I was reading this that a lot of first time founders or even uh, the founders who are taking the accelerator programs, otherwise, they have been the employees before like nine to five proper jobs, and they had jobs and they left that comfort zone and are now becoming um, the, the hustlers, the, the challengers, the change makers out there. What would you say to them? Um, what changes? What changes when we uh, move from being an employee to being an employer? I would say. I think everything, everything changes, um, and I think there are um, great outcomes and some tough outcomes as a result of that. I think what I hear um, back from the founders that I'm lucky enough to work with is um, those stressors change dramatically. Um, many of them go on this founder journey because they have a great idea. They have a great solution. They, they see a gap in the marketplace and they have something to fill it. Um, and so they actually are less stressed about the product or um, the job and it pivots into really the people side of things. Um, now, you know, there is this tremendous sense of um, a need to keep payroll afloat and to have, you know, a strong uh, business foundation to be able to, to give folks the security they're looking for um, and that their employees need. I think hiring becomes stressful. Um, you know, many of us don't think about hiring too much in our day to days and it becomes really critically important to the success of a startup in terms of who is that next hire where are you going to put the next investment if you could use 10 folks, but you can only invest in two? Um, and those become the things that I think um, keep folks up at night. Uh, and so it becomes very much more um, a people and leadership challenge, um, just as much as it does about the product itself. Uh Yes, 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 do everything. That's that's a great insight, actually. And I wanted to have a bit of the brainstorming on that. So because you 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 see a lot of founders coming up and you did mention that you prefer like Google prefers the founders to come on the later stage, at least the ones who have gone with the A round of uh, seed funding, at least there. So what are the challenges that they face and what are the solutions that Google can provide? So one is for sure uh, the technological advancement that you provide. Um, is there any support on the funding part? Is there any support um, on, as you said, on the hiring part? Is there any support that Google provides during this accelerator programs? Absolutely. So um, I'll walk you through maybe to bring some color into the program itself. So 
our accelerators are about three month programs. So 10 weeks of really in-depth programming. Um, and first we kick off week one, each company develops bespoke OKRs. So OKRs are objectives and key results. That's Google's kind of core goal setting philosophy. Um, and so we share that philosophy with the founders in our cohort and they each develop bespoke OKRs, objectives and key results that they're looking to drive during their 10 weeks in the, in the program. Um, and those goals can span everything from very technically rooted goals through to people in leadership, through to growth, sales strategy. Um, and so uh, we design a program to be able to deliver on all of those. Month one in the program certainly is very technically focused. Um, we cover things from cloud infrastructure optimization through to um, leveraging AI and ML technologies um, through to very niche experts that we'll bring in across Google, depending upon who the companies are in our cohort. But then in the second month of the program, we pivot more to the business side of the house. So we focus on things like digital marketing, international expansion, uh, brand building and brand strategy, as well as um, how to think about sales um, across your organization. And so um, we certainly then really uh, pivot more into that growth mindset. Uh, and then we close the program with a couple of weeks entirely focused on leadership development, which um, again, I think many, many founders who are pulled in a million directions don't always have the time and space to think about the people um, side of the business. And, and we know how much value that that tends to add specifically to the founders in the program as well. And then we close with a wonderful demo day uh, in celebration of all of the, the startup teams and the progress they've made. And so um, to answer your question, um, I think we've designed a program that's well-rounded. And so we, while we do uh, work on very technical projects with our founders, um, we, we see a lot of value to them in terms of the various subject matter experts across their teams, being able to get involved, spend some time with us, um, have some one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions and, and really unlock value across Across the entire organization. I guess you mentioned like a whole 360 degree circle here, mm -hmm. um, starting from the mindset, um, the support, uh, the, the mentorship, the development, like everything around it. And that's probably what makes Google Accelerator program so unique and outstanding with whatever you do, with whatever resources you have. And the knowledge that you bring into this ecosystem is just remarkable, Ashley. The other thing I should mention is um, for any given cohort, we have about 100 to 150 Google volunteers uh, who very much graciously lend their time, their passion, and their expertise to our to our startup teams. Um, and a program like this couldn't exist without, you know, very generous ge generous uh, people across Google um, going above, well above and beyond their day jobs to make sure um, that their the founders in our programs are set up for success. Um, and it's it's really a testament to Google's culture. Uh, people are very happy happy to give kind of evenings and extra time um, to support the community at large, um, which is which is a really awesome thing to see in, in a company like Google. A big shout out there to all the community supporters and lovers, the volunteers who have given their time, energy and effort to build this ecosystem, Ashley. So thank you so much, Ashley, for, uh, for giving a shout out to them too. And um, before we let you go, Ashley, there are a couple of questions that I would really like to pick your brain there is, uh, you mentioned you started uh, the accelerator programs in 2020. So we are in the second year and then going forward in the third year in 2022. So what is new or coming up? Is there anything interesting that is planned up with the accelerator program in terms of the expansion or, or how do you uh, envision seeing this uh, development happening around Google in Canada? Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. So, so you're right. Last year was our very first foray into Google's Accelerator offering in Canada. Um, and we had two programs open to Canadian founders last year. We had, of course, our first Canadian cohort. Uh, and we also had the North American Women Founders Program that ran in Q4 of last year. Um, and this year, we decided to triple down. So we have six programs over the course of 2021 open to Canadian founders. We um, had four Canadian companies 
companies in our first voice AI cohort. Um, so that was a North American program um, entirely dedicated to companies doing interesting things with voice technologies. Uh, we have, of course, our second Canadian cohort, which is live as we speak. Um, we, we have the, the cloud program I mentioned about to kick off really focused on uh, cloud native startups doing very interesting work with cloud technologies. Uh, and then we have a climate change program that my US counterpart is leading as we speak with two Canadian companies in that cohort. And then we will close with our black founders and women founders programs. So, um, so while we haven't gotten into the throes of 2022 planning yet, um, I'm, I'm very proud of the signal and the increased commitment um, from Google to support Canadian founders. And hopefully we continue to see that acceleration uh, continue. But certainly we're very committed to all of the talent in Canada and really being able to bring, as you said, when you kicked off, the best of Google's people, products, programs and technology to Canadian founders. I would say, woohoo, great, great information there. <laughs> uh, uh, really looking forward to take advantage of as many programs as possible, Ashley. And Ashley, I would love to pick your brain for a minute here uh, to have Ashley's one minute giveaways to the aspiring entrepreneurs who are there, who are really looking forward to start something of their own and looking forward to some wisdom and some guidance there. And not everybody would be able to make through the accelerators. So any giveaways that you can do to our audience today. Yeah, I think um, two kind of tips, I think, for anyone who's, who's an aspiring entrepreneur. I think first, it's, uh, it's all about mindset. Um, we talked about this at the opening, but it takes a lot of bravery to see a big problem that the world needs a solution for and, and to create that solution. And then to have the tenacity to stick with that, um, not just on the good days, but on the, on the difficult days also. And so I think really embracing the mindset of an entrepreneur first and foremost, and then second, dive into the community. I think uh, we talked about community a lot. Um, there are so many rich opportunities for founders across Canada, early stage through to late stage. Um, and, and yes, we have our accelerator programs. We also host a program called Founder Fridays. Um, this is a monthly meetup open to anyone and everyone across North America. Um, from aspiring entrepreneurs through to you know, series C and D companies. And our goal of that meetup is to connect with the ecosystem monthly to deliver some education and thought leadership um, and, and really just to have a regular touch base uh, with startups and founders across North America on a regular basis. And so I strongly encourage whether it's Founder Fridays, um, whether it's other community events, start to get in a room even if it's a virtual room with other like-minded folks. Um, I think that certainly helps to, to overcome that feeling of loneliness as a, as an entrepreneur and a founder, but also um, it's, it's those connections that prove to be really valuable through your founder journey. Uh, wow. Great piece. Great giveaways, Ashley. So uh, let me ask you, uh, where could people actually connect you or find you or even find those uh, Friday Founders Meetup events? Is that open for everyone? Is it free of cost? Where is... Um... Absolutely. So yes. So Founder Fridays, free of cost, open invitation. Um, and so you can check that out and register for our next event at g.co slash Founder Fridays. Um, to read more about our accelerator programs. And I'm going to throw a bunch of links at you. Um, you can go to g.co slash accelerator Canada to learn more about the Canada program. Uh, likewise, you can go to g.co slash black founders accelerator and g.co slash women founders accelerator to apply to those programs now uh, before the applications close. Uh, and of course, feel free to, to add me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to connect. Uh, thank you for sharing those links, Ashley. Um, a, a personal question from my end. How do you do so much? Like, where do you get that uh, energy, that passion to drive this force all along, heading this amazing, miraculous team here in the country? How do you do that, Ashley? 
Yeah, I think my job is easy compared to the founders that I get to work beside. So I think I get my energy from them. Um, trust me when I say it is truly a joy to be able to work with, um, you know, the best of the best across this country. Um, the founders in the current cohort are doing amazing things, um, even those who, who don't necessarily make it into the cohort. But as I'm reading the applications, it's truly inspiring just to see all of the amazing work that's happening across this country. Um, and so it would be it would be impossible not to be full of energy to be able to support these startup teams um, who really are tackling some of the world's biggest challenges. Uh, great, Ashley. And Ashley, um, anything that you want to ask that's going to bring, you know, accelerator programs or the goal towards your vision uh, faster, you can reach, you can develop those platforms, anything that we can support to help that? Yeah, I think um, support Canadian founders and small businesses really at every opportunity possible. Again, I think we have so much to be proud of as Canadians. There are you know, so many, and again, it's not necessarily just startups, but also small businesses who are doing truly tremendous work uh, and, and bolstering our economy as they do it. And um, I, I think we should all support local wherever possible. Um, and I think um, just support each other. Uh, and, and really commend the, the work that's being done. Uh, in that vein, we should, I should, I'd be remiss not to mention that we recently closed the, the Canadian cohort demo day. Um, and so tune in, uh, watch these amazing founders learn about their companies. Um, we would love to, we would love to get more eyeballs and support on the work that they are all doing. Uh, thank you, Ashley. And uh, anything, uh, anything that you want to, talk about before we end the show anything that you want to share because I know you have given a uh, great information on uh, the company support what the program looks like uh, the complete curriculum what is going to be uh, vision forward and how we can support each other around it is there anything that you want to talk about before we close the show Ashley no, I think um, I'm just, you know, very thrilled and honored to be your uh, one year anniversary guest. Um, it's such a pleasure, again, to see all of the amazing things coming out of the Calgary ecosystem specifically. And so I guess my last ask would be um, to continue to apply to our programs, to other amazing programs across the country, um, and really kind of fuel, again, this wonderful startup ecosystem that we have here. Thank you so much, Ashley, for supporting this ecosystem and speaking with us on our anniversary episode. So we are really, really thrilled to have your mindset, your perspective on the show. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you.